Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to our live audience show. I am Murayo Afola Biban, as always. I have the ladies here. Hi, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Veronica in the building. Yay. Welcome on board. How are you doing? Good to Very see you. Very well. Thank you. Yeah, I'll come back to you. Let me start with Nima. Nima, <laughs> okay. what's How up? was the traffic? Traffic. Is it getting better? Okay, you know, I made a post on Thursday last week and they said an AIG actually came to order the trucks to form a line and give us space. And so that space has been maintained for going. But they've started work immediately. They blocked the roads. They're fixing the roads quickly. Fantastic. So I'm happy that, you know, I got a response for what That's I went good. through the past good week. Good stuff. But uh, my experience a new thing yesterday. So I went to, I'm grateful to God for life. My other sister had a minor surgery, so I went to see her. But I was coming on that Alagbadu axis. I experienced a new form of begging. So able-bodied, not disabled anymore, attack cars, supposedly fine cars, and you know maybe female, and knock on your window asking you to feed them. Able-bodied men. Feed them. Mm. Feed me, madam. Feed me. I didn't. I've never seen such a thing. Interesting. Oh. Okay. No. It's not legal. There's no need there's this guy. There's, 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 there's no need this guy. No, that's, that's a thin line between robbery because <laughs> in our traffic there, what mm -hmm. we experience when such people knock mm -hmm. on your door, you, you think it's robbery. Once, once you wind down to try it's to give them money. I think it's different. You're attacked. It's, it's different. It's 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 not to rob. I still, just I still, asking. So it's okay. That's a not just asking. That's not just asking. Look, let me come talk. How are you doing? How's your weekend? I'm very, very good. My weekend, very interesting. It's midweek anyway, so how was your weekend? Oh, the hair. Yeah. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed by life with my kids, a lot of work. So I said, let me do something different to spice up my day. So uh, they were asking me at the salon, ah, what's going on? Uh, is it your birthday? Are you doing something? I said, no, I just want to do my hair. They're like, but I've not done this kind of hairstyle in like five years. Yeah. I said, yes, it's good. That's why you try something different, something to just make you, put you in a different mood. And I'm really, really excited about where I'm, um, the space I'm in. Yesterday, I engaged in a conversation with um, a, a politician and we're discussing the psychology and all that. And I realized that I was being very, very praised when I left the meeting. I'm like, ah. Residual knowledge, keep reading, yeah. keep growing, keep mm. broadening your mindset. Because I was dishing out information that I didn't even, I wasn't consciously aware that I had those information concerning Absolutely. how to prepare. A lot of politicians just go into elections or go talking and say all sorts. They're not properly groomed to, you know, it's just. You can start a business with that, right? Like, that was what the person was telling me. The person was saying that. I was not like, but I never thought of it. RDJ used to do that. You know, yes. Many of them didn't know how to speak. Mariah, we, we did speak. NLP, but people don't understand the effect of NLP, the psychology I've been doing on preparing a politician to properly present himself because mm. most people that have good intention they don't know how to talk about it exactly yeah, they don't have to Fine. know how to express it mm. just yesterday i was watching um journalist hangout i mean they got this new award gladiators award yeah it's very it's most street, street, credibility street credibility and all that i was hangout. excited for them yeah and i remember that we got the same award last year we didn't make any noise we, we, we just said thank you sir and we just let you know we didn't we didn't we didn't because we didn't know how to push it out there so yeah. it's important to, yes it's important that to now, let the world know what, you what you've doing, done because yeah. now people have to make the noise themselves it's i'm like telling you have you. to blow your trumpet really Hi, hiding veronica well I it's been an interesting week i came up with this nice uh, <laughs> documentary on Marco yes yes That's i'm so stuff. elated yeah. it's on bbc minutes and i'm glad ah, i'm fantastic. excited about thank it thank you for Paul design on that station <laughs> on our station <laughs> 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 let's go on a break now when we come back we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper stay with us we'll be right back Right, we're gonna start with the punch. Oshupo, federal government pays constables 50,000 naira each for election duty, all mm -hmm. more. Allowance more than 45,000 naira monthly pay. Uh, let's see, picture here of a flood in Anambra, and they conveniently put another flood in North Carolina. So don't come and say in Nigeria, the only flood did it. <laughs> so that so people like it's you will not have this nice. <laughs> Policemen brutalized last month, officials vandalized car over colleagues' arrest. Bring back our girls, ICRC, UNICEF, demand rescue of Sheribu and others. Anti-Buhari coalition alleges plots to attack National Assembly leaders. Lagos governorship ticket, Ambody's wife fails in bid to change Tinumbu's mind. Presidency APC have presidential aspirant in PDP, says Wiki. Decide electoral cases on merits, CGN wants judges. 
and FG transfers 21% shares in maintenance company to CBN. Okay, the human interest is metro, so, metro news. Metro news. Um, the la two last one officials were properly beaten by <laughs> um, two mopos attached to a bank on account of another mopo who had co um, um, contravened traffic rules. Let me dramatize what happened. He, <laughs> a, 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 a mopo mm. car was driving on BRT. Let me just explain that area so that people understand. You do, you do so robot. between Ma Marina, uh, Ma Maryland and Anthony, he was trying to get exit yes. from there. He went into the BRT lane causing traffic. Exactly. Of course, last month, whose duty it is to regulate traffic, and arrested him. BRT. Yes. Took his key, and you see this, the thing that they do, they don't uh, um, respect this other agency. Wait, so wait. the Mopo said, you cannot stop wait, me. He wasn't wait, even wearing a proper uniform. Whenever you reach that place, the when they stop the vehicle, okay. when, they, when they stop the vehicle, uh, the, 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 the last ones came in front of the vehicle, okay. took the keys, yes. trying to haggle with the Mopo guy, yes. doing their own. Then two people, then the matter does not consign them in any matter. Mm -hmm. Two police officers in a bank, attached to a bank, crossed over to come and meet them and beat up the last one officials. The matter did not consign them. So the Mopo guys that were actually involved now fled because obviously no, no, they, they they created the um, escape for him. So they attacked the last man guys, beat them up, asking for the key. When those ones were delaying. They attacked you the vehicle. They they care, as in, I'm just no, looking from left to right. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm having a bit of last night experience. And I know that right. because of disrespect for this agency is why we suffer traffic. So imagine, exactly. for nine at 9.30 a.m. in the morning yesterday, they held other people who had businesses, legitimate business to go to. Mm. That's why last night cannot regulate our traffic now. Yeah, in the no, it's really, really, they really, really to be police. And police should actually be supporting last night. Yeah. They, they should, they 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 should be law-abiding, exactly. knowing that, you know, they are um, um, law enforcement agencies. Yes. I hope they can trace this. They arrested yeah. some of the assistants, and I know the bank is noticeable, so they should uh, release a yes. uh, deliver The major headline, is it any other place? The, the federal government paying yes. constables 50,000 naira for, each for uh, the elections. It's just for them to do their duty. But so some it's a one-day election. It's a one-day election. Yes. Salaries of um, sergeants is 45,000 naira. 45, naira. And you are giving an allowance for one day election of 50,000 naira. I am happy for the officials that have been deployed to Oshu State. Sure. I'm really happy yes, for so them. 18,000 plus. Yes, yes. Right, this is something. But then some, um, you know, agencies, there's non-governmental organization are saying that they shouldn't connive with politicians to, so, to ensure time. rigging because of... So what would this, you But those ones are above salary are getting 120,000. 120. Yeah, they are paid. Moving on to the nation. Harry. To assume, post me to assume. Vote APC <laughs> to shut out corrupt leaders. Uh, OPEC partners to ensure oil market stability, says Baring Bakindo. State's debt profile now I over think. 4 trillion naira, says budget IT. Somolu Hamzad hmm. challenge good. Hey. Fayoshi, I'm ready for interrogation on September 20th. Mm. So, Governor Fayoshi has invited EFCC. Saying, He's saying they should come. Since the EFCC is saying that they can't wait. Uh, for the October date, he's 16. been giving them that. He, he's saying they should come it's over to come. You know, but, you but he's in short notice now. He wrote to them. Tomorrow is the 20th night. Yes. Short notice. If you really want them to come, no, he like wrote Monday to them earlier. Giving them, them notice of when his immunity would elapse. October yes. 16th. He gave but them. they are saying they want to come so, 20th. And he is saying, okay, there's something like, behind the last few days of Fayoshi. He still needs to be in the front page of the yes, newspaper. So. Shah, still the last day. He's going to be the front page. Going, yes. Something He's, will happen, Shah. Leave, leave my governor. Ah. <laughs> By marriage. <laughs> so, um, the APC okay. um, head in Lagos was saying that Sawolu and Amzat is, is um, Salvador. That is just, you know, democracy playing out. They are good candidates. They should vie for, for the Very primaries. Very convenient. And then, you know, but I, I, I dislike the way they're making it look like it is strictly a Tinubu issue. Yeah, we'll they're trying to that appeal there. to Tinubu. Yes. And I, I feel that um, it's beyond that. Mm -hmm. People, grapevines are saying that it's a party structure. It's the it's Lagos the, people. The story, the story so, actually alluded to all party, uh, all um, party uh, elements. Mm -hmm. So the PSP operators within the party mm -hmm. are not for the governor, they are for the new... Well, I agree with Salvador, though. I feel that if we weather this, whether we have Ambode back as governor or whatever changes, the truth government. is we would have a stronger democracy because okay. we would have competition. The essence is for democracy to mm -hmm. thrive. I hope so. And also, party. nobody should... Um, 
should make it look as if Governor Wadi didn't work because we know he of did. Of course, yeah, it's that's, that's not a change. Yes, that's, that's not, not a he worked. It's not because and everywhere you go to, you see something. No, there's sometimes where you go to, you see something. Imagine can argue here. Everywhere you go to, you see something. Try to make it look as if make it grievances, legitimate grievances against the governor. There's nothing wrong in saying it. You don't have to shy away from it. But if he walked, he must acknowledge it. He should campaign by himself. Moving on now to Vanguard, pressure piles on Ambody to drop second term bid. The many bought battles of telecoms operators. US-based uh, Nigerian group offers to pay Leah Sharibu's ransom. APC is plotting to attack National Assembly next week. COP alleges, and uh, we have no such plan, says APC. Uh, National Assembly agrees with Buhari, harmonizes electoral amendment bill. CBN BEP um, signed sale of 12.6 billion Naira federal government shares in Mint. Okay, which other story? So um, the, let's talk about the card reader issue because um, the electoral bill. Mm. This is the third, fourth. The, 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 the fourth, fourth revision, fourth. and now it's been signed by the National Assembly. We're expecting that the president would um, assent to it, but it's really, really close cutting to the elections, and I hope that we can get this, um, all this done quickly. The amendments have been done to include not major, the card. Yes, the, no, the card reader was never what? taken out. That yeah. was just you know yeah. for, for propaganda. They're not major. They were just you know some certain. Um, that the president that will allow for proper mm -hmm. execution of it. Mm -hmm. so it's, and a US-based uh, group, Nigerian group, but actually they talk, they've written yeah, to the United yeah. Nations trying to see if they can get support for Leah Sharibu and mm -hmm. ransom mm -hmm. to you know, the, the president has asked that anybody, any organization that can, you know, influence Boko right. Haram to ensure that these people or these persons are released should, you know, assist <coughs> the government and mm -hmm. so. Okay, let's move on to Daily Sun. Card reader legalized in latest electoral bill. Kalu meets IBB in Mina. Senate. Makes case for Buhari's re-election. Um, Oshu Guba, Buhari, Tinobu APC, governors, Wu, voters for Yetola. PDP presidential ticket, rivers who collectively de decide aspirant to support Wiki. So support, says Wiki, actually. Mm. Flood wrecks more havoc in Anambra and Bayelsa. And Christian Muslim leaders sign peace pact in Abuja. Um, so there's a major issue with flooding in Anambra and mm -hmm. Governor um, Ob Willie Obiano is pleading with people that live within 13 communities of Ogbaru local government area of Anambra State yesterday that they should please relocate because things are going to get <coughs> worse. worse. So I, I hope that he has made preparations for where they can relocate to maybe like an accommodation sort of for a while, while the water well, would clear off. It's not on. just in an Anambra because it's across the country. Yeah, About 100 persons have died mm. because of flooding. Mm. And, you know, there's been issues, especially in Kogi State and all of that. There are yes. IDP camps. And mm. the situation within those camps is deplorable. Is deplorable. And mm. so the government has been appealed to do more. Can we tell the story of the Osho State? You know that the, the governor, the election is this weekend, and okay. um, there's still a pending case in court that will be um, decided today against the PDP candidate, uh, Senator Adeliki, against the certificate that the certificate was forged. Now, the first case against it was they settled out of court because of um, they were able to reach an agreement between the, the, mm. the parties that filed the case. There's a new case now, and it will be filed today to <coughs> confirm if it will be disqualified, which is few days to, to the, election. the election. Moving we'll on now in. to New Telegraph. APC, CUPP, Baker over fresh plots to sack Saraki and Dogara. Mm. Wiki says, Buhari security chief approached me to support PDP presidential aspirants. <laughs> CBN acquires 17 billion hour worth of shares in NSPMC. Um, that, uh, Governor Wiki is just saying that one of the security chiefs in he mentioned President the Muhammad, name when the president Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Buhari's administration had actually approached him to support a specific it, PDP candidate and he did not mention the name suggesting that they planted a PDP candidate mm -hmm. within PDP mm -hmm. so that to sway certain votes to our please president. let's talk about the shares so NC CBN is um, um in selling, a, off. Se selling off no not CBN CBN is buying up the federal government uh, federal government owns 30 percent of NS PMC, which is a printing company yeah. that prints our um, money. So they are, the government has 30%. And in order to increase revenue within that company, they sold off 20% to CBN in making it profitable <coughs> so that CBN would invest money. They can now start printing our passports. You know, we have issues with passport yes. printing. Mm. They can print other things, right. legal t tenders. Cool. So it's a good thing. We have to um, run off, but I was going to take a story. Actually, we need to make it a hot topic. Darie picks APC I nomination from from It's prison. not on the front page. It was on the front it, page, but we, unfortunately, yeah, somewhere, we, somewhere we need to really discuss. That's all I was waiting for. We need a guest. From prison. From prison. That's all I was waiting for. And supporters are saying that they're likely that they're gulling up support for him. That's all I was waiting for. 
waiting for him. The yeah. people deserve the government they get. And they say there's a precedent. Omishoro too got the yeah. from yeah. I mean, They need money. They need the money. Of course, yeah. he's disqualified. There's no court. Anyway, unfortunately, we'll bring a guest to help us understand this better because Neil, as a, as a human being, I don't understand. <laughs> Let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue on our series with Indomie Independence Day Awards. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Staying with us, we actually have lots of newcomers in the in the building. Hello, guys. If you're here, first time here, say hello. Hi. Oh, good you're to welcome. have you. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you. Now, Duffel Primo Foods, the makers of Indomie noodles, is here again to appreciate youngsters below 15 who have actually done something heroic and amazing. Hence, they created the Indomie Independence Day Awards. So today we have a 20-year-old, but <laughs> she, she was 12 years old. Her name is Treasure Obasi who had become a TV presenter against the odds of losing her father, and she is the 2010 second place winner in Indomie Independence Day Award. Also, we have the public relations and events manager, Duffel Premier Foods Group, Mr. Tokwe Ashiwaju. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You can, you can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag yourviewTVC so we can read your tweet. So let me start with you, Treasure. Yeah. You're 12 years old. Tell us what happened and how Indomie identified you as a, a, a child winner. Okay, thank you. Um, I was 12 years old at the time, and I started the show, Young Inventors, as a presenter uh, when I was nine. So the show had been on for a while, and then suddenly one day someone called my mom and said I had been nominated for an award. I didn't even apply. They just found me. Right. That's, the, that's the thing I love most about this award and the, the platform, they find you okay. doing what you're doing. So then they said I had won. And as at that time, it was still first place, second place, third place, but over the years, it became categories. The social um, okay. bravery category, intellectual bravery category, and the physical okay. bravery category. So <laughs> my own um, award would have fallen under the intellectual bravery. And as at the time, I lost my father. Mm. I lost my dad a year before that, when I won the award. I lost my dad when he was, when I was 11 years old. And um, naturally, things became a bit tougher. It became, it, it was harder, you know, growing up, school and all that. So this award and then the prize money scholarship came just in the niche of time. So why did you so start that show? What exactly was the objective of starting the TV show? I always had the passion for presenting and an opportunity came and my mom, uh, my mom encouraged me to grab it. So that's how it started. Let me come to you for that. Okay. Let me come to the ladies. Mrs. Okwe, what about her TV show made her qualified, qualified for that? Mm. Okay, as, as of then, you know, we had it in mind that we are also going to uh, segment all these things. So it wasn't actually that we just wanted to keep um, awarding physical okay. bravery acts alone. We knew there's so many other um, attributes out there that people were doing. So what we did was that, okay, we said, okay, let's look at other areas, intellectual capabilities of people. So of course we ran through so many, uh, uh, so many uh, interviews. Mm -hmm. And of course, in finding her, we knew that, oh, this is a girl who definitely was out there facing the crowd, facing cameras, and we saw that, oh, there was something in her that we could encourage. Mm -hmm. And of course, amongst many other stories that we got, she also passed through the um, segment of, okay, having to go to the judges sitting, and of course, they, they found that, okay, she was overqualified, and that's how <laughs> she became winner. And interestingly, even as of then, that she was entering Unilag, in that particular show, she won a scholarship, apart from the scholarship, wow. the yeah. amount, True university. Mm. Wow. wow. Yes. Right. And the scholarship was by Pastor Tinde Bakari because he's the yeah, one Pastor who. Tinde Bakari. Yes, yes, he was the one who presented my award at that time. Wow. Mm. Yes. So I wanted so, to know what your background is like. At nine, you wanted to be a presenter. What exactly did your parents put to get to in you? What kind of um, exposure did they give to you to assist that dream? Okay, or did you just you. get eloquent mm -hmm. from, the, I, I, from your mother's <laughs> room? You know, this kind I of always thing. loved reading. In fact, when I was three years old, I knew how to read. At the age of four, and I was in primary one, 
my, I would read newspapers to my mom and I would tell her to correct me in the words that I didn't know how to mm. pronounce well. So then I just developed that, you know, that passion for reading. And then watching television, I was always awed by, you know, presenters like you that would just keep talking and talking and talking <laughs> without even reading, at the, reading their books or looking at their papers, not knowing there was something like the teleprompter. I became fascinated with that world. Mm. And when I got the opportunity after my first acting job to audition for this presenting job, my mom went with me. My mom is my manager. She's, she's my manager. biggest fan. She's you know my supporter. What? You know what? Even before you she continue, just... just you're hired here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, Thank I don't want to know where you're working. Thank you. I don't know what, where your office is, <laughs> where your boss is telling that TVC yeah. has hired you. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot, because you're amazing. Thank yeah. you so let me much. Let me let Veronica jump in. Right, now, let, let me, let me, uh, my question is to you, uh, Mr. Tokwe. Yes. Now, all oh, eight years, how mm -hmm. has the reception been towards this award? Seeing that um, people don't have to put in, you decide to pick, and how do you go about mm -hmm. uh, that? What are the yardsticks? Okay, that okay. You use? It might not be totally uh, right to say that people don't have in. These are things that you just don't want people to go acting. And that's why we said things that had happened in the past are things that we were looking for. Mm. So, is I mean, we keep encouraging people if you have such stories, of course, you can send it to our website www.heroesofnigeria.com mm. so I mean stories like that are shared and of course we sift through it we pass it to the judges and they decide who becomes winner and at the any level point of acceptance how, how have people accepted oh, this incre yeah, I mean it's been it's been going bigger and bigger I mean this year alone I mean the judges are sitting uh, tomorrow I think tomorrow 20th mm -hmm. and uh, we had well over 380 stories mm -hmm. and of course we had so many stories but we've been able to sift down and of course we prone down so that I mean with judges are not also bored with those kinds of stories that oh, over and over again. yes okay so, so I have the question for both of you one um, to you directly is the direct impact of in, um, the Indomie award on your life how did it boost you to becoming who you are and I want to ask you that question like how many success stories? This is eight years, and I'm really happy that you're able to follow up with those that were recipients as far back as eight years ago, and you can still have a relationship with them. Yes. Other people that you've had relationships with. So we'll start with her, then we'll come to you. No problem. Okay, thank you. So the direct impact of Indomie in my life is it actually sponsored my education. Mm. My prize money was 750,000 naira in scholarship. And then I was attending a private school. So it was such a huge support in wow. paying my school fees. Mm -hmm. Plus the scholarship that was presented to me by Pastor Tunde Bakare mm -hmm. sponsored my education to, you know, obviously the 750 exhausted at a point after mm -hmm. paying school fees of every term, three mm -hmm. terms, you know. <laughs> so it, it actually encouraged me that if this talent that God has given me, I am here actualizing it, I'm here, you know, working with it and it, inc it actually provided these opportunities mm. for, for my education to be sponsored. Mm. So if I continue doing what I'm doing, who knows the possibilities that you know, are gonna yeah, come up. Definitely. So it really encouraged me, yes. <laughs> thank you. Okay, like yes, and the past winners up so far we have uh, 37 winners, mm -hmm. and uh, it's apart from these 37 major winners, of course, mm -hmm. we had other entries whereby we still follow up from time to time. And we have this pool the 37 winners are people who have become Indomi family. Right. Mm -hmm. We look at them, so it's not just that they have won right. and we have left them. Right. I mean, for instance, she's here right yeah. now. Yes. Even <laughs> one of those programs that we had done, right. uh, she had anchored the program right. alongside yes, with, uh, <laughs> with, with some of the, the you know, <laughs> when you see such young girls like this i mean okay even with all the talent she still right. went into mass communication university mm, of lagos fantastic. she's now a graduate oh wow <laughs> so it means that i am <laughs> grabbing you like <laughs> like, like cheese on bread but mm. like, let me let me just okay. we have to round up okay, okay. um I know the next batch is coming up very soon. October 13th is the awards. October 6th. 6th. Uh, 6th. Uh, very, that's next week. Saturday. So I know that tomorrow also you're starting with the screening. So yes. how many have you shortlisted so far? I shot 15. We have, oh. that we are presenting to the judges, we have 15 stories wow. that have been reenacted. Mm, reenacted. Because, I mean, apart from just this script writing, right, I mean, right. you need to show visuals. Yeah. So we need to recreate what those people have done. But how many entries did you have in the beginning? 380. Wow, and now you brought down to 15. Yes. So you have those judges who you're getting from different parts of life. How many winners would you have? And then 
We now have the fin finalists three. Yes. To be presented awards on the 6th of October. On the October. 6th of October, Fantastic. Yes. Well done, Indomie. Thank you very much. So um, hopefully we'll see, we'll watch it TV on TVC, and um, we'll be able to know who won, and we'll bring the recipients, winners, yeah. the winners here yes. to celebrate with them. Mm. Thank you very much, Treasure. Thank You're you very welcome. much for having us. That's all we can take on this show. When we come back, we chat with the woman we love. You get to meet her right after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Staying with us, she's from Ilefe in Ocean State, mm. southwestern Nigeria, and a graduate of law. She's also the founder of Africa Fashion Week, a project that promotes African fashion designers through its subsidiaries, the Africa Fashion Week Nigeria and the Africa Fashion Week London. She was recently appointed as the Heritage Ambassador of the Moremi Ajasero Legacy. Welcome with us, Princess Ronke Ademiluyi to the show. I thought I would say a crown or something. I mean, it's, it's so simple. Like the title of princess by birth. Princess by birth. Imagine, Imagine that. that. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my nice God, you're really high. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's so much. I know you just concluded the fashion week. I mean, we'll talk about it a bit later, but tell us a bit about Morimi. this appointment mm -hmm. as this ambassador for Morimi. What is it about? Lots of people don't know. This other they are clueless. Um, so could you just give us a snippet on who Morimi was and why it's so important for, to keep her legacy? Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, Morimi was um, a Yoruba queen who was married at one time to an Oni of Ife, Oni or um, over 1,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but she did, um, she did something really heroic. And that's why KBC, the owner of Ife, feels that she needs to be celebrated. Mm. Um, under his House of Odudua Foundation, there's an initiative which is called the Morimi Ajashoro Initiative. Okay. It talks about her, but it also empowers young women as well. So under that initiative, we have a, a cultural pageant. We also have um, the Morimi book that we launched and dedicated to Mrs. Amusum in July. And we're also doing a Morami musical with Bodani Austin Peters in oh, December. So how is it that you were choosing to fit into that role? Um, I think um, because of what I do and because, the, because I'm passionate about um, women as well, young women, and because I'm an Ife princess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so uh, hold on, <laughs> let's not let's exhaust <laughs> the personality more. Me. Yeah, mm, because you see, Africans have this. We keep saying it's African culture. Women are subjugated. Women are submissive. You, women are not outspoken. Mm. Moremi was an was a heroic. She had to. She had played a heroic role in the world at the time. What kind of person is she, and how relevant is that personality today? Is that the to African thing? culture? Okay, well, if she was alive now, she probably would have been um, uh, <laughs> like a, an, an FBI agent because what she did then was that her, um, her people were being um, taken as slaves. Women and children in Ilefe then were being taken as slaves. Um, Ife was invaded. And what she did is, well, she gave up herself. She sacrificed herself, mm -hmm. you know, for the enemies to capture her. Wow. Anything could have happened to her. She could have died. Wow. You know, and she still wow. did that for the sacrifice of her people. So. Are you ready to make that sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> so at, at least the values you're looking for in young ladies now that you want to put through the pageant, what are the values? What, 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 are, what, what is maybe three, four words that represent who Morimi is and what you're trying to project that we should respect Morimi for? Oh, she was a selfless person. Mm -hmm. She thought about her people first, so mm -hmm. she put other people before herself. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what we're trying to do with young ladies of today, we're trying to tell them that you need to be selfless. Mm. You need to um, go away from, you need to be from. courageous. Mm. You need to um, move away from that me, me, me attitude, mm. all about me. Mm. She wasn't like that. Mm. You started this African Fashion Week in, in London. And I think that's one of the, one of the reasons why the, the Arnie noticed you over there and saw, saw the work you've done. Because you see, when you celebrate culture in Nigeria, you're seen as mm, local, mm. these are these local, local conversations. Mm. But when it's done abroad, it carries a bit of weight. And it seems as though you were identified for projecting the culture Already. over there. Why did you start that Fashion Week in London? And what exactly was the objective? And, and how, how, how was the success story? 
Actually, um, I initially planned to start it in Nigeria in 2010, but it didn't work out. And since London is my second home, I decided to go to London in two th back to London in 2000 and, um, 2011, okay. you know, just to start it to see. Um, then the Africa fashion was booming. Um, people were accepting our fabrics. They were incorporating African designs into um, everyday wares. So I thought, let me try it in London. Although there were a few challenges, um, a few people said the name Africa would not sell in London, that nobody would want to be associated with it. But I was like, you know what, I'm still going to try. If it works, it does. If it doesn't, I'll move on to something else. And that's what I like you to talk about, because um, we are, as a country, running away from everything traditional, everything African, everything mm -hmm. that we should be proud of. Now, you've decided to create a platform to encourage fashion designers within and around Africa to, push, to um, showcase mm -hmm. their designs in London, how has it been, the journey so far, the challenges you've faced, so that other people will understand what's going on and if they should consider persevering, if there's a, there's a hope for something good to turn out at the end of the day? So initially when we started in 2011, there were challenges. Nobody thought African fabrics would sell in London. Nobody thought the name Africa would be, I, I was even told to change the name, to remove the Africa. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to try. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, like I said, I'll move on to something else. So we went ahead. We did our first event in 2011 at the Bishop's Gate in, um, uh, the Bishop's Gate in London. It was an amazing event. Um, we hired a venue for 750 people, but to our amazement, we had 4,500 oh. people oh. turn up. A good start. <laughs> a very good start. Good start. So it just, it, it just showed then that the demand for Africa yeah. was there. Mm -hmm. People were hungry for Africa. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know who the African designers were, but there wasn't a platform. So you, saw, you, saw, you saw a need and you filled it. Yes. And now you've created a large market for African designers. Yes. How many more African designers, how, you know, how are they uh, you know, trying to get more people yearning for these opportunities? Are there more Nigerians trying to do this or Africans across other countries in Africa? Nigerians and Africans as well. Um, it's our, we celebrated our eighth year in London this year. Um, we had work. about 60 designers from wow. various African countries. Mm -hmm. um, our fifth year in Nigeria as well, we did them last week. Mm -hmm. um, about 46 designers as well from different African countries. A lot of the young designers use our platform as a springboard into the fashion industry. So it's a platform that empowers and encourages young designers. Right. When, when you spoke earlier, you talked about the fact that you wanted to start in Nigeria, but uh, it failed, so, so to speak. Why, why, why did that happen? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> Exactly, the Nigerian factor. They didn't just believe in it, they probably didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Even up till now, it's a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. really? getting corporate organizations to support the that fashion what industry. To to. What's sponsorship is, like? How do you fund it's, this? Um, um, the Oni of Ife is our grand patron, so he supports it every year. Um, he, he's, um, he's really, really um, into buy Nigeria, wear Nigeria, Let so he supports. Let me pause you a bit on that because I had a bit of an ill feeling. At when, when I heard that the fashion event you, were, you planned last weekend was holding in Lagos. And I understand, yes, Lagos is the fashion hub and the whole of Africa, but I know we're trying really hard to wear Nigeria, project our culture, and, and let people understand and appreciate what we have. Don't you think, in your, in your, in your view, that we should, even though Ife is not that cosmopolitan, shouldn't we try to have these kind of events in those communities where people then begin to see how important our culture is and to reinforce the need because Lagos is so is an easy market but if you go to Oshun State to try to project this over there it might it might, it might actually make some real impact not just the superficial yeah. type of impact. It's part of the plan to take yeah. it across Nigeria you know to take it across different states in Nigeria maybe starting from Abuja go to the east as well the north as well maybe Kano or Kaduna. So, okay, so I wanted to ask something because we've, we've had guests, we have a lot of um, vi viewers, um, audience that are into the fashion industry and they always think of showcasing in a fashion show would cost them a numb on the leg. Mm -hmm. But aside from the money, can you tell, explain to them what, what you've seen in eight years of doing this, what are the areas we could improve upon that will make our fashion more acceptable internationally? Okay, um, every year, um, the Africa Fashion Week in London, we have different African countries who participate mm -hmm. 
this year we had um, a delegation from South Africa mm -hmm. sponsored by the South African government, mm -hmm. a delegation of 15 designers. Wow. wow. Yes. And what they do is the government supports their designers. I don't, we don't have that in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. The government needs to support, support. the up-and-coming and young designers. Uh, it's uh, very uh, important. Uh, well, do you think uh, the, the government or it's so difficult to support their dreams like this in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, 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 exactly. Really, yeah. because <laughs> since we are projecting right. Africa, Absolutely. we are projecting our country. I really don't even talk about yes, what the government should. I'm African thinking about what the fashion designers should do because mm -hmm. I hear people yeah. say the finishing or the labeling or, or the styling. As in, yeah. like talking about what the designer. That's we have a lady that usually comes here and she's a fashion designer. What can that person do to become one of the people that should kiss? When she um, in your one thing we have to bear in mind is that we don't have fashion is not a course in any university. Uh, aside fashion from and textile, Yaba Tech. Yaba Tech. Yeah. I think that's the only um, mm -hmm. higher institution mm -hmm. that um, right. uh, yeah, yes. that, that, um, that teaches fashion. So I think we need to incorporate it into. <laughs> also, I wanted to ask. You know, the African prince has a uniqueness to it, but the factories are no longer here. Yes. What role are you playing to, you know, to bring us back? Because now we now we're in Karamid in India. <laughs> it's very insulting. But you see, you've created a platform and employed a lot of people and encouraged mm. businesses to grow. Mm. How, what role are you playing to encourage, you know, making of these fabrics to create more employment and see if government would then be interested since they're diversifying and partnering yeah. with you? We actually had this discussion with one of our partners, um, Daviva Textiles, and um, they, were, they were actually, I think um, a couple of weeks ago, they were really complaining about how hard it was for them to um, compete with um, the designs that come in from China, that come in from India as well. Mm. They actually make their fabrics in Nigeria. But they were, um, so I think um, it would be good for the government to give them like um, a tax rebate, like an incentive to encourage them to continue to produce in Nigeria. Okay, what, let's, go on a, let's go on a quick okay. break. When we come back, we'll take some phone calls and tweets. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. take one or two comments from our audience but first I think Veronica had a co question go ahead yes I have a question for her now you told us about Moremi getting married to the Orni so my question to you is is that what we should be expecting anytime soon so our, um, <laughs> our Orni is very single <laughs> My great-grandfather was an Orni of Ife, so that's how I'm related to um, the whole royal. Does that <laughs> yeah, stop really or change anything? <laughs> Can we ask her a question? Are you marrying Orni of Ife? I want him to marry his cousin. <laughs> <She's older now. laughs> Would you like to marry the Orni of Ife? Can we, can we change the topic? <laughs> can we change the topic? Okay, right, sure, sure. Um, let's, let's, let's ask about you, because the objective of bringing women who are doing great things like you is to inspire a lot of women out there to listen, if you have, if you believe in something, it can come to pass. So I want you to just take us through a bit of your background, how you story. use your story. So, so many out there can be inspired and how yeah. your struggles, um, the, the challenges you've had in, in the past and how you're able to overcome those challenges to get to where you are. Okay, um, where do I start? So um, I grew up in between London and Lagos. Okay. Um, did a bit of my schooling in Nigeria and did the rest in London. Um, I studied um, at Thames Valley University. Um, obtained a law degree. I didn't really want to do law, but then, you know, yeah, uh, growing up, up then, you had to be a lawyer <laughs> or a doctor. Ooh. I really was into fashion, but then my mum was like, fashion. They didn't understand the whole concept of the fashion right. industry. But while I was in the university, I remember I used to travel. I used to go to the Far East to buy clothes to sell for my friends. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, so I had developed like a passion for fashion right from while I was in the university. Were so you making the clothes or were you just no, selling no, no, the I wasn't. I was just, I was just No, no, I was just selling the ready-made uh, yeah, ready oh, clothes, ready -made. yes. Let and me I, come to someone in the audience. I know you have a comment or a question. Yes, ma, go ahead. Okay, I'm told the mic is not on, but so uh, I do apologize for that. She, you heard the question. The question for, our, for those at home, she wants to know what you're doing to encourage and empower young people who want to get to where you are. I think that's what she said. To find, to encourage, and you know, to establish, to them. establish young um, talents. talents. 
So with, um, we do that with the Africa Fashion Week Nigeria already. It's a platform for young designers. Um, we always have um, a call for designers before we start every year. I think this year we had about 900 designers who applied. Oh, more. Yes, out of the 900. Do they pay for application though? No, no, they don't pay to apply. Mm. It's just um, application is free online, but they would have to send us sketches or they would have to send us like a link to their Instagram page. Mm. Yeah, so from there, we would choose some of the designers. Some designers, we, um, we showcase them for free. We don't charge them just to encourage them. We also have partners like the Bank of Industry where we introduce them, the designers too, because they have the fashion fund that they use to support designers as well. Very good, fantastic. I know you have a 21-year-old daughter. Yes, Oh I my do. goodness, you don't look like a day old 20. Thank you. <laughs> so you look beautiful. How do you keep up and how do you maintain your health and status? You look really, you don't look like you have a 21-year-old daughter. <laughs> I do. Oh, I have a 21-year-old daughter who just graduated um, two months ago. Is she interested oh, wow. in fashion? Sorry? Is she interested in fashion? Um, not really. <laughs> She's, um, she studied um, architecture and product design. Wow. Oh, so yeah. she's sketch. <laughs> so um, let yes, me do two tweets. Um, Adebayo, Mr. Adebayo says, I have worked on so many editions of London Fashion Week in London. African fabric is second to none. Our designers are one of the best in the world. We have to patronize them and we have to make our own continent great. He's also saying that interesting guests on the show today, um, we must promote our culture and we, we are the best of all creatures. Long live Africa, long live Nigeria, and long, long live um, so, the Latin So there's this perception that African clothes are expensive. Are everywhere, even here now, we buy some for mm. close to 20. Mm. What are you doing to make this thing more affordable, affordable. and mass product, massly produced so that, we, you know, there's this market, the market is here, but the people are more concerned about well, the market is there. We also try to advise designers as well not to outprice themselves out of um, the, out, out of business because they might see um, they might create a dress that looks um, thank you that looks similar to like a Christian Dior or an Armani dress, and they're thinking in their heads, oh. Maybe I should, um, put, yeah. and we're like, no, you can't do that. You're not Christian Dior, you're not a Mani. Just because you're creating a dress that's similar to that doesn't mean you have to put the same price there. So we also try to guide them on the business side of fashion as well. Okay. What are your future plans for the African fashion? Um, we're going to be moving to different continents um, next year with the support under the House of Odudua Foundation, which is a foundation of His Imperial Majesty, the Oni of Ife, when we're launching the Africa Fashion Week in Brazil. Wow, wow. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I just hear about it with them. So, yes, about 90 million people of Yoruba, yeah. Yoruba yes. descent yes. Yeah, in Brazil. So there are lots of young ladies out there who are doing fashion, who are they're just starting out and they're they're selling to family and friends and they're like an opportunity to get on the wall stage like you have. What do they do? Is there somewhere they go? Is there a website they go to? Do they have to apply? What exact, what's the next step as, after listening to you now? Um, they can apply through our website. We've started taking applications for 2019 already because once we, st once we finish one, we start, another yeah, one. we start another one. We start plans for another one. So the website is www. Give, we'll get, we'll, we'll tell our audience <laughs> online. We don't want to okay. give. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the objective is just to support young to people. To support young we'll people, the information. Yes. People are asking for your Instagram page and all that. So we'll just I'll reply those tweets with the information. Okay. And not only for the young girls, also gentlemen in fashion. Yeah. Right? Oh yes. yes. Oh yeah. There were, yes. yes. We have some uh, male designers as well who are really good. Adebayo Jones, Adebakare, yeah. Kola Kudus, to yeah. mention a few. What are the small ones? <laughs> you know, the small ones. We have a small design. We have. Well, we do have a small, uh, a few male yeah. designers yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Good Thank work. you very much. Princess. All the best with more me. Thank you very much. That's all we can say. Hope you enjoyed and learned a few things. Don't forget. Please don't use unbranded oil. It's dangerous to your health. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow.